when Jesus described the end times, he prophesied four coming events. First, he said there would be false messiahs, those who would deceive people with counterfeit directions for the issues of the day. Secondly, he said there would be wars and rumors of wars. Third, he foretold a time of famines and lack. And fourth, pestilence and death would blanket the world. We read these in Matthew 24, verses 4 through 9. The predictions given by Jesus parallel the vision shown to the Apostle John when he was taken up into heaven. John was given a glimpse of what would occur in the future, read that at Revelation 4.1. He was shown the four horsemen of the apocalypse. First would come a rider on a white horse, armed with a bow but no arrows, read Revelation 6 verse 2. Although this horseman wore a crown, without arrows, the horseman lacked true power. His appearance would provide a false sense of authority and security. The second horseman rode on a fiery red steed and was armed with a sword. Read that at Revelation 6.4. He sowed seeds of division and brought on wars among the nations. The third rider held scales to measure out scarce resources. See uh, Revelation 6, verses 5 and 6. This horseman would usher in a time of famine and food shortages. And the fourth rider was named Death, and he was mounted on a pale horse. He announced the arrival of killings by wars and famines, plagues, and natural disasters. See Revelation 6, verse 8. Today, many people debate whether we are in the final days of the end times. By definition, the end times began when Jesus ascended into heaven and will end when he returns to earth. But some wonder aloud, are we reaching the end? The proliferation of a culture of untruths, the devastation of current wars and threats of nuclear holocaust, food shortages in nations that depend on Ukrainian grain and barren uh, supermarket shelves in our own country, coupled with the pandemic and natural disasters, all seem to portend destruction like that foretold by Jesus and observed by John. But no one knows, other than God, the day or the hour of Christ's return. See Matthew twenty four thirty six. And prophecies tend to be filled in, in multiple layers. This may simply be a precursor to the end, but the conditions foretold by Jesus and foreseen by John, whether they are upon us now or are coming at some future point, are forces that will challenge even the most devout among us. So why have insights about the end times been revealed to us in Scripture? Certainly the purpose is not to cause fear. After all, God is love, see 1 John 4.16, and his perfect love drives out fear, 1 John 4.18. Yet Scripture makes clear that God does nothing without first revealing his plans. Read that in Amos 3, verse 7. He foretells the plans through his prophets, through his word, and through his Holy Spirit. I believe that God has warned us about these times so that we can prepare to stand firm against the evil forces that are to come. That requires a spiritual resilience that takes place as we are transformed into the likeness of Jesus. Read 2 Corinthians 3.18. Scripture promises that as we grow in our faith walk, we are increasingly conformed to the, to the image of Christ. Romans 8.29. The image of Christ is, de, is described in each of the four Gospels. Matthew's Gospel, for example, was written from a Jewish perspective and makes the point that Jesus is the promised Messiah. In a world contaminated by falsehoods, dissembling in the church, in the reporting of news, in political and cultural fronts, Jesus is the promised leader, showing the correct course, the truth. 
Uh, see Matthew 5, 17, he came to fulfill the law. In the Gospel of Mark, Jesus is portrayed as a servant. In a world torn by division and wars, Jesus came to serve humankind. Mark wrote that Jesus came to serve and give his life as ransom for many. That's Mark 10, verse 45. The Gospel writer, Luke, pointed out that Jesus was fully human and experienced life much as we do. That's why the Gospel of Luke traces the human lineage of Jesus from the first man, Adam, see Luke 3:37. And John's Gospel elaborates on the divine spiritual nature of Jesus. See John 1, verses 1 and 2 and verse 14. The spiritual evils of this world lead to death, but Jesus leads us to divine spiritual resting place, described in John 14, 1 and 4. Uh, in my Father's house are many rooms. Interestingly, when the prophet Ezekiel was shown the throne room of God, he saw the faces of heavenly creatures surrounding God's presence. Each of these creatures had the face of a lion, an ox, an eagle, and a human. That's Ezekiel 1.10. These reveal the four natures of heaven's occupants. Pastor Joseph Prince observes that the faces of heaven's occupants parallel the nature of Jesus as outlined in the four Gospels. The Messiah King is represented by the image of a lion, the king of the jungle. The nature of a servant is shown by the face of an ox, a beast of burden serving mankind. The face of the eagle symbolizes Christ's divine spiritual nature soaring high in the heavens, and the face of man represents the humanity of Jesus. As we grow in Christ, we take on his characteristics. We are led in truth, following the example of the lion, king of Judah. We take on the nature of a servant working for others, uh, like uh, the, the ox. We live subject to the frailties of mankind, but soar like eagles above the fray when we rely on the Lord for our strength and heed the leading of the Holy Spirit for our direction. Growing in the nature of Jesus prepares us to overcome the deadly forces of evil that are lurking in this world today. Moreover, growing in the attributes of Christ clothes us with characteristics of heaven's occupants. These have been described as the four faces of Jesus. As we reflect on growing in the characteristics of Jesus in order to prepare us for the coming challenges, consider these questions for introspection, if you will. Question number one, how do you discern truth in today's culture of deception? And question number two, how are you helping others with Christ-like service? And question number three, how are you growing in spiritual strength? The rigors of the end times are coming and may even be upon us today, but we have been equipped with the example of Jesus to prepare us for facing the challenges of the coming time. Scripture promises freedom as we are transformed into the image of Jesus. See, for example, 2 Corinthians 3.18. Oh, to be sure, we will encounter evil forces, but as we take on the facets of Jesus, we are better prepared to handle the promised hostilities of this world. God has pulled back the curtain of time in order to forewarn us of coming challenges, but he has also provided us with opportunities to grow, opportunities to grow in Christ-like character so that we are not overcome by the events of the day. With Jesus as our model, we can face the future with confidence and peace. Mm -hmm.